In this tutorial, we'll implement push notifications with custom navigation using Firebase and Flutter. Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 5 of the Firebase and Flutter free course. This video is dedicated to implementing the push notifications using Firebase. Head over to foldstacks.com and download the starting code under the thumbnail image. This is the code as we have written it from episode 1 to episode 4. Once you've downloaded the code, you can open it up in Visual Studio Code. The project already has the Firebase functionality set up so that we can communicate with our Firebase project. The only thing that we have to add for the push notifications is the code to ensure that we can get the payload when registering callback functions. If you haven't set up your Firebase project yet, you can go to the Firebase messaging page on PubSpec and you can go through the integration for Android and for iOS and follow along with that tutorial. The only part that we are interested in is this piece of the intent folder that has to go into our manifest. That code will allow us to get the payload from the push notification when we tap on a notification message. We'll open up the Android manifest and then under the code for the main launcher we will paste the code for the intent filter for the flutter notification click. Next up we'll add the package that we'll need to communicate with Firebase messaging. We'll add the Firebase messaging plugin and we'll use any version greater than 5.1.4. Once that's done we can move over to the implementation. Similar to my other boring implementation videos, we will create a service for Firebase push notifications. It will have an initialize function that we'll call in the startup view model and that will be it. So under the services, create a new file called push notification service. Within that file, you can create a new class called push notification service. The first thing we'll do is store an instance of the Firebase messaging. We'll make it a private variable called FCM. Then we'll create our initialize function that will be called in our startup logic. The first thing we'll do in this function is check if we are on the iOS platform. And if we are, we want to request the notification permissions from the user first. We'll pass in the iOS notification settings. The next part is the most important part, which is calling the configure function. This sets up your Firebase cloud messaging internally and allows you to provide three different callbacks for the payload to be delivered to your application. The message that is being passed into these callback functions is the additional data that you provide in the cloud messaging console when you send a notification. We'll provide a function for the onMessage function. This takes in a map with a key string and a value of dynamic. We'll call it message and inside that function we will simply print out the message with the name of the function as well. Then you can copy the onMessage function twice and then change the name of the second parameter to on launch and the name of the last function to on resume. Just to go over the callbacks quickly, for the on message function, this function is called when your app is in the foreground and you receive a push notification. The on launch function is called when your app has been closed and you open the app using the push notification from the notification drawer. And the on resume function is called when your app is in the background and you open the app using the push notification in the notification drawer. Next up, you can go ahead and open up the locator file and register our push notification service as a lazy singleton. And then the final part to get this functionality integrated is to open up the startup view model and then we will locate our push notification service through the locator. And the first thing we'll do in our startup logic is to initialize our push notification service. 20 to 40 more videos down the line, you're going to be very bored with my implementation style because it's actually quite easy to write your code when you wrap your functionalities within services and make use of that in your view models. That is actually my entire implementation of push notification functionality within a Flutter app. Let's go ahead and send a notification to see if it actually works. Open up the Google Firebase console, then open up your cloud messaging, which is the fifth last item in the toolbar on the left from the bottom. We'll enter the title of the notification as well as a description. We'll go next and then select the Android app, and then we'll add some custom data just to show you that you can add a key as well as a value. I'll use my custom key as my key value and my value as the value for that key. We'll publish that notification and then you should see that within your Android app, you now have a notification in the drawer with a title and the description that you just sent. 
Now, if you click on this notification message, you'll see that the callback functions are not being fired. For the Android app to pass the message to your callback functions, you have to pass a specific key into the additional data of the push notifications. Head back to the Firebase console and create another new notification. This time the title will be message that handles click. And for the notification text, I will simply type this message will pass the push notification data to the calls. We'll go next and we'll select the Android app as the target. Then we'll head down to the additional options and for the key we will pass in click underscore action or lowercase and then flutter notification click or uppercase. We'll make sure that the app is minimized and then we will send the notification. When you open up the emulator now, you'll see the notification in the notification tray. If you open up your console and clear your logs, you should be able to see that when you tap on that message, we now get the on launch callback function where we receive the data that we have sent into the push notification. The last task we'll add in is navigating to a specific view based on the push notification data that is sent. So open up the push notification service and import the navigation service. Then we'll create a new function that returns a void called serialize and navigate. This function will take in the exact same message that is being passed to our callback functions. The first thing we'll do is we'll store the notification data in a new variable and we'll get that using the data key on the message. If you open up the debug console, you can see the previous body and you'll see that there's a key data that gives us back all the data that we pass as additional options. Then we'll create a new variable called view, which will index into the notification data using the key view. Now we can check if the view is not equal to null. And if we have a view, we'll check if the view is equal to create underscore post all lowercase. And if that is the case, we want to navigate to the create post route name using the navigation service dot navigate to function call. The last thing to do is to call the serialize and navigate functionality within the on launch as well as the on resume callback functions. Now let's create a notification of something that you would see. So the title will set to share something and for the notification text, you haven't created a post in a while. Share something. That's the kind of message you would get from a social media platform. For the target, we'll select the Android app. And for the first key, we will again pass in the click action with the flutter notification click as the value. And then we will now pass in an additional value called view, which is what we said the key will be. And for the value of that, we will pass in create post. We'll make sure the app is in the background and then we'll send that notification. This means when we open up the app now, it should navigate directly to the create post view. Let's open up the notification by tapping on it. Once tap, you'll see that the app opens up and we end up in the create post view directly. That's all I have for this functionality. It is as much as I do and I can complete all of my custom notification functionality. There are some more guides for additional background functionality on the Firebase messaging plugin page. They've made it a bit easier to add background functionality using static function calls. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next week.